Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay. Hello. Uh, konnichiwa. Uh, wow, this is an amazing crowd. This is the largest iOS crowd I've ever spoken in front of. So um, it's my first time in Japan, um, and it's a beautiful country. So thank you for having me here. I would like to also thank the Tri Swift organizers and sponsors for making it possible for me to be here. My name is David Hong, and as mentioned, uh, I live in San Francisco. Um, my favorite city is New York City, but I think Tokyo is going to be uh, challenging that. Uh, it's such a beautiful place and very inspiring. As many of us, I was very influenced by a lot of things that came from Japan. I'll share a few examples. Um, as a child, I was very inspired by the video game composer uh, Yuzo Kishiro who uh, created this game called Bare Knuckle, or as in the US, we call it Streets of Rage. Um, another person who I was really inspired by is the amazing artwork and beautiful storytelling by Hideo Kojima, who did uh, the Metal Gear series. If I had to pick, you could say my practice is design. But you heard in Sasha's talk about coders designing, I really believe that um, designers using computation is a place of inspiration for us as well to really understand engineering. Um, I studied painting and drawing in college and really believe in sharing ideas and making. As a child, I was really influenced by HyperCard, which really drew my interest in visual programming and using computation as a part of that creative process. As mentioned, my talk is designing experiences with augmented reality. I will preface that I am not an academic expert in AR, but I will share what I learned since WWDC of 2017. I believe it's one of the core values of Try Swift to constantly learn and explore your comfort zones. That's why a lot of us are here today. Let's talk about the three types of realities that is popular right now. The first is virtual reality, an immersive experience over your face um, in your current reality. Oculus is probably the best example of this right now. There's also augmented reality, which we will talk about a little bit more, where it's an added layer of digital content on top of your existing reality. The third one, it's a little controversial because it's very similar to AR, but uh, companies like Microsoft, in talking about HoloLens, have coined a term that's mixed reality in which the augmentations interact with our real world. As I was reflecting on this talk, I was trying to think about the first time I even experienced augmented reality. And this technology has been around for quite a while. And for me, the first time I saw this was during the Olympics as a kid. I'm excited for the Summer Olympics to be in Tokyo in 2020. Watching swimming and other events, I realized there was this enhancement of understanding of what is going on in the events. And this is the power of augmented reality, is improving your existing world. Also in film. Could also be from watching movies. In genre like sci-fi's, filmmakers constantly imagine what the world looks like with augmented reality. If you're familiar with this film, Star Wars, A New Hope, it's the famous scene in which Chewie and C-3PO are playing this digitized version of chess. Remember, always let the wiki win. Most notable in the United States is probably Minority Report, starring Tom Cruise, about a futuristic world in which uh, police, policemen can predict the future, and there's the augmented experience. From Star Wars, Minority Report, to Ridley Scott's Prometheus, one of my favorite films, there's no shortage of AR inspiration in the world. But we don't have to wait for the future. That technology exists today. I want to take you back to 2013, when I was living in New York City. This building, if you're not familiar, is called the Rockefeller Center. It's one of the most famous buildings in Manhattan and has a very historic 
and beautiful viewing platform called Top of the Rock. In 2013, we were still on iOS 5. That seems so long ago. I had the opportunity to work on a virtual viewfinder that used augmented reality, but the technology wasn't there yet. Um, we used very similar patterns to we have in iOS, and we actually had to hard code um, some of the locations to mimic this experience. I wish I could do it again today. So why is AR important? Some may be skeptical if it's a technology that's going to continue to stay. But trends to seem to indicate it's not going anywhere soon. As we look at design over the decades, we can see it continuing to evolve. Early on was about usability, about being able to create software that was a little bit more pleasant, and it was the first time it was considered in part of software development. From 2020, I'm sorry, from 2007 to 2017, and still on, there's this concept of user experience, where it was really empathizing about the users that would be using your software and what that would entail, and being really empathetic. Now, we're looking at something called experience design, where it's multiple devices and people interacting with your technologies, all in one seamless experience. Where I work at One Medical, our product happens to be a health service that is delivered through a multitude of digital products. One of the most famous AR examples right now is probably Pokemon Go. Um, I'm curious, how many still play today? Show of hands? No? Just one? Okay. But 65 million people were playing Pokemon Go after seven days. That's incredible. Augmented reality is not just for games. There are huge opportunities in some major industries that really do something special and impactful. You can imagine AR working in factories, helping guide employees, being both safe and efficient. What about for fashion and shopping, where you can get more of a live preview of the items you're interested in buying? AR is not just for large spaces, but also for indoor experiences. You have companies like Airbnb who are working on augmented reality technologies to improve experiences of how people navigate inside the home. And especially for me, someone working in healthcare, um, this is a great example of a surgeon using Google Glass. This is an industry where making a mistake could be life or death. So what makes a great AR experience? For some of us, exploring new technologies might remind us of the early days of exploring iOS. I think, simply put, a great AR experience seamlessly integrates the digital world with the physical. I love this quote from Paola Antonelli, who's a curator at the Museum of Modern Art. She says, we live today not in the digital, not in the physical, but kind of a minstroni that makes the mind of the two. If you're not familiar with minstroni, it's maybe ramen would be a good analogy of this, where it's the infusion of two worlds coming together. I also like what a designer, Olivia, said, uh, who did AR experiences for NASA is to use real life situations as inspiration when you're designing for AR. I want to spend the rest of my time sharing a proof of concept that I prototyped with a friend. For me, that's the best way to learn. We called it growth AR 
One of the programs I like to observe at One Medical is our pediatrics program. If you're not familiar with that, it's essentially care for infants and children in, in the doctor setting. When I visited a lot of these offices, I was really inspired by some of the playfulness they had in growth charts. This is an example of one where there's cute animals and it was a way for children to see quite literally how they measure up with other animals. My friend, also named David, works on Nike's innovation team. We partner together to build an AR experience for growth. We use both SceneKit and ARKit 1.0. So I started this like I start every project, is to draw it out first. In fact, you can see how that's, that's how I planned my talk. The famous animation studio, Pixar, has this saying that you have to put your ideas on paper first. Because if, you, if it's in your head, it will always be perfect and you'll never refine it. So this is why we start with drawing on paper. What I'm showing you here are the initial sketches we did to get started, to start building. No code written but moving the idea along. With AR, it's very challenging because you also have to ideate three-dimensionally. Drawing is a great start, but it's not sufficient. I looked at a few different prototyping tools to get me started. As mentioned, I love Quartz Composer. It's the fastest way to prototype and really learn. So that's what I started with. But in addition, when working on a different interaction paradigm, I start with the basics. When Apple announced Apple Watch and we didn't have access to the hardware, we 3D, we 3D printed one and wore it around to see what the experience is like. For this, we made an iPad out of foam core and started playing around with it. This is my colleague, Roger, helping me mimic the experience. Again, you want to invest in time to work on three-dimension experiences that you can learn from right away. You want to get constant feedback. Designing for augmented reality requires a lot of iteration cycles. This is a great diagram at WWDC in 2017 called 60 Second Prototyping. My colleague Izzy at Black Pixel often liked to say, the one way you can be more productive is to reduce the iteration cycle. I would work on the storyboards, and David would help me with the experience using ARKit. I'll show you what we ended up with, and I'm going to about to show you a live demo as well. Another point I want to share is the simulator is not sufficient. When you prototype and have to test for the real world, you have to take it out and see what you learn. Because in AR, the world's essentially infinite. Perhaps this is a way we should learn and build all software by taking it out and trying it. In the course of the week, we did multiple iterations. As you can see from the photos, not, not all of them turned out the way ex we expected. Next piece of advice, I would say, is to play the part and act the experience. If you're not willing to act out your inter interaction, how will you expect someone to use your product? I'm going to show a live demo now. So Gil, if you can come up. I have a backup if it doesn't work. But do you want to stand here? All right.
Lighting is good. Okay, everyone see the screen? Imagine if I'm a doctor, and Gil here is a kid. I want to measure his height and show him how he compares to other animals of his age. So let's analyze this plane here. You'll see I'll measure. I just got a Suka card, so I'm going to pick the penguin. You'll see here, not to scale, it will show how Gil measures up with another animal. Maybe I want to share this um, with his parents, too, and say, <laughs> Gil is growing so much. He's almost the size of a, a penguin. Give Gil a round of applause, please. Thank you. Hey, guys, I got to catch my kamonegi here. I'd like to close with summarizing the main things I learned. AR is on top of the real world, so focus, real life, focus on real life interactions as you build. Fast iterations are important to build enough test cases to validate your idea. Plane detection was really hard on ARKit 1.0, but with ARKit 1.5, they've added um, vertical detection and also wall detection, which will improve this experience a lot more. Keep physical and strain in mind. Accessibility also applies to AR. Whether it's a heads-up display or a hands-up display, consider how physical strain is going to impact your users. Something to keep in mind is you're dealing with the environment, not a screen. Reality is the biggest view controller you'll ever work with. And I would hate to imagine what auto layout would be like. <laughs> as I talked to David, as we collaborated, he shared a few interesting points. He said the thing that he learned most in this process was to constantly iterate. Because the question wasn't, is this object three or four points off? It's, the giraffe is floating in the air. Avoid using mobile patterns. You can see on top of the rock, we were still pretty naive about how we designed it and reverted back to um, what we were used to. AR presents itself in a very much different paradigm. So be creative and act how people would interact with the actual world. Most importantly, play learn, and explore. I feel this really encompasses what TriSwift is about. Experiencing with AR reminds me a lot of the early iOS days. It's similar to how we're talking about what we can do with blockchain for um, this future community. It brings such excitement for a new space that we can really learn and play. Thank you so much. I am honored and humbled to share this talk with you. I believe augmented reality will give us a sense of renewal to explore our own reality. I have my slides here, and you can scan the QR code, but my talk is up there. And thank you so much for your time.